Welcome to the Life Unlimited Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice so you can confidently live your life your way for life. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello and welcome to Life Unlimited with Larry Heller from Heller Wealth Management. I'm Larry's producer, Eric, and I'm here to learn along with you, the audience. Larry, how are you? I'm doing terrific, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I see you are not alone in the studio today. You've got a guest on the show, a return guest, if I'm not mistaken, correct? That is correct. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce her to the audience, if that's okay with you. Yeah, because this time everyone can see her. Last time we were only audio. That's right. That is absolutely correct. Uh, Sitting beside you is Karen Tannenbaum, Esquire, LMM, CPA. And she has been an attorney for over 35 years and founded her firm, Tannenbaum Law, PC, which helps individuals and businesses facing IRS and New York state tax problems. Karen is a frequent speaker on IRS and New York state tax issues for numerous professional groups and serves as a committee member and chairwoman of several local organizations. Karen is the co-creator of Walter the Vault and co-founder of Commerce Plaza Incorporated, both of which promote financial literacy. Um, I remember you, Karen, from the last time. It was a wonderful episode last time. I'm looking forward to this one as well. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. That's all Larry. I'm, I'm just here for the ride, too. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. Yeah, we're going to talk about something a little bit uh, a little bit different than uh, we probably talked about some tax issue last time. Yeah, New York State residency, I remember. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about kind of financial literacy. So, Karen, why don't you tell our audience, how did you get involved in financial literacy? So I'm an attorney and I'm a CPA and I have an LLM in tax. And now I have grown daughters. But when my daughter was five years old, we went into the children's shoe store and she said, mom, there's a vending machine. She didn't say those words. Can I have a quarter? So I gave her a real quarter. She put it in the vending machine, out popped a plastic egg. And what was in the egg, but a fake quarter. (laughs) My daughter was so excited. She's jumping up and down. She thought she got good value. And I knew immediately we had a problem. How do you teach a five-year-old good money habits? I think statistically they say that you have your money habits by seven years old. So Mm -hmm. I said right away, there's something I have to do here. I went to to the local school district, the the curriculum committee, and I said, do you have any kind of financial education for the children? And they said, it just so happens that we're putting together a partnership with nine school districts, and we're going for a grant from the New York State Department of Education – And we're looking to come up with an idea. So if you have any ideas, bring them forward. Turns out there was a a place in Florida, uh, Enterprise Village, that was having a K through 12 financial literacy program. And I immediately uh, called up the principal and uh, said, I want to bring it to New York. And it turns out that the New York Times then wrote an article about me Hmm. bringing the world of business to children. Awesome. Yeah. Actually, I think I saw this the other day that there are two states now that are now mandating financial literacy for high school. I don't remember exactly which one of them might have been California. So, um, yeah, so I think even just, you know, I know you talk about five-year-old, but um, even my kids, when they graduate, what's a checkbook? How do you balance your checkbook? Exactly. What do you need to, you know, what do you need to do really with the basics? I mean, maybe learning calculus, but they don't have all the basics. So, so how did you begin promoting the financial literacy to children? So uh, we got this grant. Turns out we got the $1.5 million that wow. we had to share among five, nine school districts. And they said, you could have, um, have the money if you start a 501c3 nonprofit and that you're self-sustaining in five years. And so we did. We started Commerce Plaza, which still exists. We've since donated it to Yes Community Counseling Center. And uh, it's a program open to all school districts on Long Island. Uh, Fifth graders, 11-year-olds get to go on a, a, first they learn how to write a check back in school. They have a six-week curriculum and they each uh, prepare a resume and create, uh, ask for what job they want. And then they come to this location. It's a field trip. Two classes come, 50 kids a day, and over 75,000 children have come through the program. And um, we have unbelievable partners. McDonald's supplied the lunch for 10 years. Uh, Capital One gives a substantial amount of money if, either every year or every other year. Ikea decorated the place. We now have Jovia uh, Federal uh, Credit Union, uh, Northwell Health, uh, Hofstra. And if you go to YouTube, you could watch a video of these children in action, a four-minute video of these 11-year-olds, they come dressed for work 
and they interact with each other. So um, somebody's the bookkeeper, somebody's the realtor, somebody's the phone person. And when you pay, when the bookkeeper writes out the check for the real estate, for the lease, for the rent, uh, the Velcro sign comes down. And when they pay the phone bill, the, they connect the, the, uh, the phone. And now at the end of the day, everybody's interacting with one another and it's a whole village. Yeah, very cool. So what are the average age of the children that so, go to these um, events? So this one program is open to uh, probably fifth and sixth graders, 11 year old kids. And um, we're now looking to have something where you take it home because now in a digital world, you could have online learning after you leave. So we're actually exploring what could be next. So take it with you. I actually have two employees in my office right now that went through the program. So they're 20 something, they graduated college and they remember it fondly. They say it was better than the circus. It was better than going to the Don Juan restaurant for their fifth grade trip. And uh, that's pretty cool. They so, said it had an impact. On so them. where is it located? Where did... Right now it's in Levittown. Okay. Uh, yes. Community counseling owns center owns a, a building there. Uh, I, mean, I don't know, four or 5,000 square foot building. And it's nothing like, uh, what they had in uh, Pinellas County, which was almost a miniature Roosevelt Field, uh, you know, a tremendous 20,000 square foot building. Well, Roosevelt Field is much larger, but a uh, tremendous building that, um, uh, but but it's the same experience. So it's not this big, massive place, but it has uh, just the right space for the fifth graders. And again, the Pinellas County was open K through 12. So this is a little different. So so mostly the school districts from Long Island or are they all, all over the state? Uh, Long Island. It's all Long, Long Island. Island. Yeah. So it's all Long Island. So, so I, yeah, I don't remember my kids going through that. So, uh, so how do you, you you promote it to all the different the school districts? So when I, you know, I was the uh, uh, co-founder of Commerce Plaza and the uh, initial uh, chairman, mm -hmm. but I'm not involved as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So we leave it to uh, Adrian Lopresti, who's the executive director of Yes, and we left it to Jamie Bogenschutz for the many 30, 25 years before that, and they're in good hands. These are professionals and they bring in teachers and they know how to connect to uh the, to the sponsors and to the business people and they uh they put together this great trick so curriculum. what was the original goal of the commerce plaza yeah really to teach to start young and make it fun to uh give these kids the base the money basics that they need right the basic money skills mm -hmm. that you need how do you write a check what, what does it mean to take out a loan? These kids actually start every day. So there's, let's say, 10 businesses. Every bookkeeper and every business leader has to figure out what is it they're selling. And they get together and they have a meeting every morning and determine what they're going to sell and how much they're going to price it for. And then they take out a loan from the bank. And then at the end of the day, every bookkeeper stands up and gives a profit and loss statement. And then they have to pay back their loan. It's quite interesting. So, interesting. so every person is both a business operator and a consumer. Mm -hmm. So you're the bookkeeper. You get a paycheck. You go over to your friend who's at Capital One, you deposit your check, and now you could go shopping and buy, quote, promotional items from each of the uh, the vendors. No. And so, it's really a great experience. So, yeah. So you mentioned that your two employees and the impact it has had. I, I would guess that you've got a lot of the stories of how this is really, you know, impacted. So, you know, I said, great. So now we have 11-year-olds uh, learning about money, but what about the younger set? You know, so we, we said we have to start something for the younger group. So we started a company. And we have an animated character named Walter the Vault. And you can see Walter the Vault right here. And he's friendly and nice. And he's filled up with rhymes and financial advice. And we have um, uh, a website, uh, WalterTheVault.com. And we have a YouTube channel. And we have 65 animated videos that teach children every aspect of money. And uh, we have books. And many, you know, there are many toys um, and games and activities that you could play on the website. Most most of the things are free at this point, mm -hmm. um, and we're looking to uh, have a TV show eventually. Oh, and so, cool. yeah, and and to you know, um, we really want the kids to learn. So right now, I have a three year old grandson, and he knows that Walter the Vault uh, is where you put secure things. You know, so so what's valuable to him, and how do you 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 make things secure? You know, maybe Hot Wheels Hot Wheels cars are what's exciting to him at three, mm -hmm. but he knows we have uh, Walter a Walter that opens up and you put it in the vault. And he puts his cars in the vault. He knows. And he'll say, oh, I want to watch Walter the Vault uh, videos. So how, how have children reacted to Walter the Vault? Oh, my God. They love it. I have mm -hmm. to say they love it um, because he's friendly and nice and he's adorable. He has poems. He speaks. So my brother is very creative and he writes these poems like Dr. Seuss. Um, save your nickels. Save your dimes. Listen well to all my rhymes. And if you do, it's me you'll thank for all the money 
in your bank. <laughs> when what is it? When uh, the skies are blue and the days are sunny, it's nice to uh, shop and spend your money. But if you if you uh, uh, stop and use your brains, you'll save some for a day that rains. And we have a whole book of Walter's words of wisdom, and uh, you know we could go on and on with all these. You know, let's see. With Walter's words of wisdom, then I could go on and on with all his his great sayings. So you can actually buy a Walter the Ball, like the one we have here. Like the- so this is a prototype, and yeah. if I could borrow it for a minute, I'm going to show you. It has songs actually for the kids. Let me get it. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> so if you push the button here, that's his theme song, and we have four five songs. And we have five songs, and I have to say that uh, the kids sing them. And all these songs are available for free. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> all these songs are available for free on our website. So while you're playing games, you could cut. You know, the kids could be coloring. We have um, pencils that come up, all different colors, and the kids could click on them and color in Walter and listen to the songs in the background. Hmm. And each song um, gives a money lesson. So every pre- uh, president. Uh, except one had a financial literacy council and they got all the bright minds of the country together. And they came up with a chart called money as you grow, what a three to five year old could understand, what a six to 10 year old could understand, et cetera. And so you could see that, let's say a a young child could understand wants versus needs. Mm -hmm. Or if once you spend their money in the store, it's not your money anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a concept that they could get. And so we have songs we wrote again in, in like poems we wrote um, four line poems, and each one represents one of those things on that chart. Hmm. So what are your future plans regarding the financial literacy? Well, we're always looking to promote Walter, and we're always looking to promote Commerce Plaza. Mm-hmm. And we're really always looking to teach the kids um, everything that we can. So we have a section for parents, a section for uh, teachers. We want to. We have a curriculum written for K through two, and we would love to get it into the schools, it's, uh, as I mentioned uh, some kind of take-home program for Commerce Plaza for the older kids. And I, I'm a CPA in addition to an attorney, and I was the inaugural chair of the um, New York State Society of CPAs Financial Literacy Committee. And we had a committee that w- was really quite active, and we put together resources starting at three and going up to adults. So if you're a college student or a high school student, there were resources, and you could go to the nyssCPA.org website. Um, I'm not sure how current those resources are because I'm not the current chair, Mm -hmm. but we put it together and it was really wonderful. Mm. So what do you think kind of in the future, you know, children will be able to relate to it's going to change. Obviously when, when we had our kids younger, there was no internet or technology. So what do you, is that something you think is going to change in the future? Yeah. So first of all, I think the, uh, we're going to be in a cashless society. We already are right. Venmo, Zelle. Um, I also think that Um, at the push of a button, or even if you have a credit card, you know, you tap to pay, uh, you still, again, need these money basics. Um, But I think that the kids are not going to see the cash as fast and as much. So are we going to be, look, it wouldn't it be my, it would be my goal that every night when the kids are going to sleep and they read a book with their parents and they brush their teeth, that they get the the extra change and they put, they save money. They learn to save Mm -hmm. and make it a habit at a very young age. That would be my goal. But are they going to see that change? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, when they see a penny on the floor, are they picking it up? I don't know. So oh, my goal would be to, for them to learn money basics and no matter what the money is, whether it's cryptocurrency or whatever, Venmo, right. uh, they understand it. It's interesting you said that you know people, children learn their um, financial acumen by the time you're seven. You just, just popped into my head one of my stories. Um, people are going to may not remember, but I, I used to take a bus and used to put the change in the bus. I wanted to be a bus driver because I got thought the bus driver got to keep all that money. So it's so funny that you bring that up because my husband and I were just saying yesterday, if we got on a bus, we wouldn't know how to pay. I swear to God, we had that exact conversation just last night. Is it, do they accept change? Do they accept credit no. cards? Do you need a card? Or, yeah, you you know. pay right on your phone. Right. Right. So right. it's a, it's, it's a whole new world. A whole, it's a whole, it's a whole new world there. Yeah. But yeah. you're right. Probably your grandkids um, are going to maybe not even have money one of their, one of these years and may just become obsolete. So, uh, so, you know, so I guess you started this, how long ago you said it's been nine, nine? No, my daughter was five Five. and now she's 34. So 29 years ago, I've been, uh, I've been passionate about teaching kids about money. And I have to say, I'm proud of all the things that we've created. We work with a woman in Seattle, Washington. She's so creative. She teaches 
online. And I think that's the next thing also. I think a lot of the kids are going to learn um, how, to, how to deal with money from social media and online classes. And this woman, Kelly Kirk Chu, is amazing. She gets five-star Google reviews on OutSchool. And, I, um, and she teaches classes um, uh, how to start a business. She's actually a coach to a little kid who's making money more than just a lemonade stand. Hmm. They created a website together. And people are buying e-commerce, you know, off his website. He's a little kid. Right. So is anybody, like, I think this should be a mandatory class somewhere in school, you know, maybe in high school, besides doing what you're doing at younger ages, by the time you get to school, instead of just one day at this Commerce Plaza, it should be a whole year. Have you talked to anybody about that? So the uh, we, we were on a podcast recently with the uh, New York State Society of CPAs, the past president. Room B, and she mentioned that there's a bill pending in New York State to make it a requirement to have financial education in high school. But I think it's been around for a while, and I'm not sure uh, if it's going to pass and go yeah. through. Hopefully, it will. Like I said, I think I I think I read recently two other states have now passed that uh, that requirement. So uh, I think it's something that should be in every state. Um, any final words you want to tell our audience out there about Walter the Vault and financial literacy? Yeah, so we have a lot of resources. So feel free to go to WalterTheVault.com. Go to the YouTube channel. Go to the Facebook page. Uh, look for Kelly Kirkshu in uh, on Outlook. On I'm sorry, in Out School. If you want to take any of her classes, uh, look up Commerce Plaza at Yes Community Counseling Center dot org or it's Y E S C C C dot org. And you could always contact me um, at li tax attorney dot com. Karen Tenenbaum, and the number there is six three one four six five five thousand. And again, we're here to handle all your tax problems. We've seen the financial hardships that people get themselves into. And that was really also another thing. I didn't want the children of these people to have the same issues. And when you, you know, when you finally get somebody out of their, uh, their tax debt, it's, a, it's such a great rewarding feeling. And you want them to have a clean slate and go forward and, and teach the kids the right things mm. as well. Well, thank you, Karen, for joining us today. This is such an important topic and thank you for enlightening. Thank you for everything you've done to help with the financial literacy and hopefully it'll continue and grow and children will have more opportunities to learn at a younger age. Thank you so much. All right, both of you, this has been fantastic. Karen, I got to tell you, I was having flashbacks uh, listening to you because when I was in sixth grade, I think, we had a, a week long thing where we ran our own little businesses in our classroom. And I remember, and I thought when my kids went through school, I was like, they don't do anything like this anymore. Um, and I had my own little business, but then I asked the teacher, can I bring a battery operated pencil sharpener to school? Somebody else owned the pencil sharpener on the wall, but I asked, can I bring a battery operated one and see if anybody wants to use it? And so then I became competition for the other person. They were so mad, <laughs> but that's how business is sometimes, right? I love uh, it. Yeah, it was, it was a, at a young age. Yeah, it was a fun learning experience, and, and I wish they would do that more. So I'm, I'm so pleased that you're doing this. So thank you for what you do. Larry, thank you for what you do, bringing guests on the show. If folks want to learn more about what you do and, and how you're connected to all these amazing people, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so they could get a hold of me on our website, HelloWealthManagement.com, or they can feel free to call the office at 631-248-3600. Fantastic. Again, thank you both so much for the podcast today. And our last thank you always goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Life Unlimited podcast with Larry Heller. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the follow button below. This way, when Larry comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we'd appreciate a like and a follow there as well. We humbly ask you to share this podcast or I didn't leave a review because this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hello Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time.